Hello class, greetings to everyone. So according to Steve Jobs, learn continually. There's always one more thing to learn. So in this video lecture, uh, my discussion is about population growth and regulation. So let's begin our discussion. So why do we study uh, population growth? So the population ecology is the study of how groups of plants, animals, and other species interact with their surroundings and change across time and place. Populations are collections of organisms of the same species that are present in the same place in time. So they can be characterized by traits like the following. So the population size is the total number of people in a population, while the population density, the number of people in a certain area, while the population growth, this is the rate which the population is uh, expanding. So why is population growth uh, study so essential if it is only one of the several characteristics? So first, uh, understanding the causes and the effects of population expansion or its decline will enable the scientists to forecast the future changes in population sizes and growth rates with a more accuracy. So this is very crucial for addressing issues like biodiversity conversion, uh, conservation. And for example, how quickly is the polar bear population? And at what point will it be so small that the population is in danger? So where it is a threat to be extinct. And also the human population growth, how, we, how quickly will the human population grow? And what will the mean for the climate change and resource use and biodiversity? And also understanding the factors that affect the population size and growth rates is another benefit of researching a population growth. For instance, uh, fishery biologists are aware that some populations of salmon are falling or declining, but they may not be aware of the reason why. And is it uh, due to the diminishing as a result of human overfishing. So, has the habitat for salmon uh, vanished? Or have an ocean temperature altered the reducing the number of salmon that mature? Or perhaps even more probable, might it be a mix of these factors? It is considerably uh, harder for the scientists to take action if they do not know what is the driving the decreases? So, and it keep in mind that knowing something that probably will not have an impact on a population can be just as enlightening. And finally, population growth uh, will it, study of uh, population growth will enable the scientists to better understand how the organisms will interact with one another and their surroundings. So when taking into account the possible effects of the climate change and other environmental changes, this is especially significant. How will people react to shifting temperature, especially in the drought season? Will one population will flourish while another will decline? So understanding the population this is very important. So in our study, where, where are we going to start? Okay, so let's examine more closely at the American Bison and the Fundamental of Population Growth where the data are available so that you can easily understand the uh, explanation of the population growth. So one of the most uh, recognizable image of the American West is the American Plains Bison or uh, yes, this is commonly known as Bison. An estimated uh, 15 to 100 million bison were once present in the plains region of the United States. So that's how uh, uh, big the number of this bison way back in time. And at the same time, uh, 
according to the according to Dairy way back 1989, hunters destroyed the wild bison population and uh, throughout the 1980s with the help of improvements in transportation and armaments. And by 1889, only about a thousand bison remained. Wow, that's a very huge number of decline in the population. In the late uh, 1800s and early 1900s, the United, S the United States government and private uh, landowners started making efforts to save the American bison from extinction by creating a protected herds. So the herds were initially modest, but due to an abundance of food and lack of predators, they quickly expand. And in just 13 years, uh, you know, in which they are already considered to be uh, soon to be endangered. The numbers of bison in Northern Yellowstone National Park grew from 21 in 2009 to 250. And between 1902 and 1915, the annual increase in the Northern Yellowstone National Park bison population can be characterized as this. That is what we call the exponential growth from uh, 25 it reached to almost uh, 250 in the yellow yellowstone national park uh, location so that's how the exponential growth from that number it uh, drastically increased to almost uh, 100 percent population that expands exponentially gains an increasing number of members as the population grows. The initial adult bison mate and produce cows which developed into adults who then produced cows. So this results a significantly faster growth than increasing the population by a certain number each year. So increases in population size are used to drive the exponential expansion. The higher the population growth, uh, growth rates are not uh, uh, necessary. So between 1902 and 1950, the Northern Yellowstone National Park bison uh, expanded at somewhat consistent pace at 18% year. That is according to Gates way back 2010. And accordingly, the herd only gained four to nine new members in the first few years, but by 1914, when the population had increased and more animals were breeding, the herd gained close to 50 new members. So the frequency of the species reproduction has an impact on how the scientists define a population expansion. So, okay, so let's talk about the figure. So I will show you a figure where can be able to where I can explain it further. So it's worth it's uh, worthwhile to take a deeper look at uh, exponential growth power. So in under 48 hours, for example, the exponential growth for produce uh, 281 trillion of bacteria from one single bacterium that could double every hour. According to Plump, way back 2009, the number of bison in the Yellowstone National Park per peak at 5,000 animals in 2005. However, if the population had continued to increase exponentially, as it did between 1902 and 1915 with 18% growth rate, there would currently be more than 1.3 billion of bison in the Yellowstone National Park per that is more than 13 times as many people as uh, we, we, are, we ever believe. Uh, so in this illustration, you can see uh, the outlays for the tests and diseases exceeds $1 billion per year from 2003 to 2007. So the possible outcome can be amazing. Exponential expansion will frequently occurs in the natural in the natural world, as in the case with invasive agricultural pests. 
introduce the animals or during carefully managed uh, coveries like the American bison, the populations of these organisms will frequently undergo a periods of what we call the exponential expansion when they enter the novel areas and have access to rich resources, the food, uh, the shelter, and the environment at the, at the place is conducive for their reproduction. So the exponential population expansion of invasive species or agricultural pests can result in severe environmental degradation in this case and a high management cost for pest species. So if you can see in this illustration, the, the cost for managing that pest is a rich, rich at around $1 billion because the, the growth the, the exponential growth of that certain species that damaging the agricultural crops are uh, increasing or growing at uh, a very rapid rate. So sometimes that in that case, it is very uh, uh, damaging or it creates a damage to a certain degree in management for agricultural production. So the limits to growing out of control after the boom. Okay, so there is a perfect set of conditions that would allow the population of uh, any creature, whether it be a plant or animal, it's a virus or bacteria, to expand and unhindered and at the fastest rate imaginable. So the populations in the natural world inevitably fall short of this ideal, even if they mo momentarily that reach the maximum rate of unrestricted growth. So for instance, why did the Northern Yellowstone National Park bison herd not increase to 1.3 billion? So because uh, we will consider some certain uh, circumstances that led to the bison population expanding between 1902 and 1950, like the birth, the deaths, immigration, the emigrations could have affected the numbers of the bison in the Yellowstone National Park. And overall, uh, these factors, like for example, the immigration, is individuals coming in from outside the populations. And this emigration of individuals will leave to go else, uh, to go in the other area. And because the community was isolated, there was no emigrations or immigrations that is uh, to so therefore, only births and deaths affected the population size. So there must have been more births than deaths because the population increased. Yes, but that's just a straightforward method to explain a more uh, nuanced uh, thing. So between 1902 and 1915, the Northern Yellowstone National Park bison herd had more births than deaths, which allowed the population to increase. So, however, how much and how quickly this increase occurred, it will depend on the age structure of the population, the lifespan and the quantity of the species, as well as the favorable environmental conditions. So the reasons the development uh, slows or even ceases can be attributed to the modifications in variable that once permitted the population so, in the figure 8, it depicts the number of the Yellowstone National Park bison between 1901 and 2008. So, during the pace of increase and decline, a current population that typically ranges between 2,500 and 5,000 bison is a well below the 1.3 billion bison that continued exponential growth would have produced. And the growth of the northern Yellowstone National Park bison has been constrained by disease and predation, and as well as the habitat loss and fragmentation, plus the human intervention, and the harsh winters. So it really uh, affects the momentum of the, of the growth of the population. So this, in this illustration, 
shows the limits of growing out of control. So in figure 4, you can see over the past century, the Yellowstone National Park bison population has fluctuated in size due to a variety of reasons. So including the disease, the predation, habitat degradation due to climate change, human interference, and environmental circumstances. So this data which were presently released by researchers with the National Park Service of Colorado State University, it shows both the number of bison that tallied annually in the Yellowstone National Park and the numbers of the bison that was culled from the population for the herd management. So the management of the bison population in the Yellowstone National Park has been rather uh, contentious. For additional information, you may also check this in this uh, website for your additional information. So based on how each component is impacted by the quantity of people occupying a specific region or the population's density. So the factors that increase the or limit the population expansion can be categorized into two groups. The severity of density, dependent issues, growth as population size approach the environments carrying capacity. So for instance, the resource competition, the predation, and infection rates all rise with population density and may eventually put a cap on the growth of the population. So regardless of population density, other variables like pollution, seasonal weather, uh, natural disaster like hurricanes, fires, droughts, floods, and volcanic eruption can substantially reduce the number of people in a population which can severely restrict the population growth. So according to Pierce uh, Franco Verhoeven, or he's a mathematician, and formulated the notion that unrestrained exponential development would eventually be strained uh, way back in 1938. And according to him, uh, published an equation that uh, restricts and exponential growth as population size will rise when researching how the resources availability may affect the human uh, population expansion. So we turn and read, utilize the Verhoeven's equation to forecast the population growth in the United States. It was a rediscovery and uh, popularization of the logic uh, logistic equation, also known as the logistic uh, equation. The Northern Yellowstone National Park bison herd uh, grew exponentially between 1902 and 1915, illustrating the logistic growth in Figure 5. However, as the population approaches closer to the carrying capacity of its environment, of its environment, the logistic growth is uh, extreme. So, in this illustration. Figure 5 shows the logistic growth curve. For a while, the population number increases. So, for example, the bison, the bison in the figure 1. But when it gets closer to the carrying capacity, it slows down at the level of what we call the K. So, it maintains the status quo. In figure 6, it shows the the real-world population that is based on the logistics growth curves. So from origins of agriculture, 12,000 uh, years before bre uh, in our time. So if you can see in this illustration, the population is uh, only 10, 10 million. So in this illustration, in that example, it seems that the population rose to more than 180 people before starting to drop and level of at 130 to 150 people. So, what elements could have contribute, contributed to this pattern? 
So the population will change in response to what we call density dependent population growth, as well as the safety seasonal or other predictable environmental cycles. So for instance, according to Elton, back 1924, noted that the lynx and the uh, snowshoe uh, hare populations change over time in a remarkably regular cycle in Canadian boreal woods here in the figure 7. More significantly, they change in a predictable pattern one after the other. So when the lynx population increased, the snowshoe hare population tended to decline and a lot of hare prediction. When the lynx population will decrease, the snowshoe hare population will tend to decrease due to the plentiful food for them. And when the snowshoe hare population will increase, the cycle will, uh, will again will repeat. So it's uh, like up and down. It's a cycle. That's what we observe in the uh, relationship between the links and the hare. It shows that the population typically fluctuates rather than just reaching a carrying capacity and staying there. So there is an onerous population experience, ups and down over time. And seasonal or other environmental variations can lead to a, a cyclical shift in population increase and can density dependent processes like prediction, as in the case of the snowshoe air and the leaves. So it is also feasible for the communities to go extinct. The shifting environmental factors lead uh, death rates to outpace the birth rates by a sufficient amount of work or the adequate amount of time. So one crucial reason why researchers study the population ecology is the unparalleled rates of native species decline that are currently occurring. Uh, On the other hand, if habitats or supplies are made available, a population that has been uh, uh, declining or largely stable through time go through a new phase of fast long-term growth. As was shown in the Yellowstone National Park by some population. <clears throat> so how about the rise in the human population? So this is the this, this, the, this data is in the country of Japan, Kenya. So the time is in 1950s uh, and then in 2020. So total mid-year populations in Kenya is around the, it reached around 20 million, 20 million way back 1960s. And in 20, 2020, they were able to reach around 50 million. So in the in this video, it shows that the exponential increase in the world population, and this graph depicts the growth in the human population in these countries, way back 1950s to estimated to 2025. And using the information from the International Database of the United States, United States Census Bureau, so the Kenya's population is expanding quickly. But Japan's population has uh, stalled and may even be shrinking. What growth pattern do you anticipate for the American population? So, in Ch while in China, so these uh, factors have an effect in their political uh, policies. Like for the Chinese government, they implemented the one child policy because they were able to reach the, the, the exponential growth. They are very, their, the population is very large. And since uh, they need to uh, consider their economical resources, so their government decided to implement a certain policy in order for them to control the population. So it really affects the decision making for a certain country. So because it's because it is it affects the capacity to
to maintain that number of people. So according to Thomas uh, Malthus, first proposed the idea that there might be a limitations to population increase in his uh, 17, uh, 19, uh, 1798 essay. So an essay on the principle of population growth. And it has since uh, sparked the discussion for more than 200 years. So there are still an outstanding questions regarding the limits of the human population expansion. And will the same causes such as lowering the birth rates, which have already started to restrain the growth in the world's more industrialized nation like in Japan, and slow down the rise of the human population globally? Or will growth follow an exponential trajectory instead? Will growing disease or risk and resource competition eventually limit the human population as it approaches the Earth's carrying capacity? If the fast expansion is allowed to continue, the demographic and population growth processes are still being researched by our scientists to help them better understand this crucial issue. Okay, so for our glossary, Let's uh, check the certain uh, terminologies that uh, we discuss. So the biodiversity is the diversity of species, habitats, and ecosystems that is found on Earth or in the specific location. The exponential uh, expansion that I mentioned earlier, a population which is continuous growth or decline, when the rate of change is inversely uh, correlated with the current population size. The age structure is the distribution of people in a population according to their ages. And the lifespan, the average life expectancy of members of a particular species or the length of time a person lives. And the fecundity, this one is the pregnancy which uh, a person will bear a child. And the carrying capacity is also known as the, uh, the symptom or two, the logistic and the other uh, signal equation for population increase. So is the maximum number of individuals that the population's resources in the habitat can support? While the logistic equation is the mathematical representation of a certain uh, a sigmoid growth curve in which the percentage rate of growth uh, linearly declines with the population size. The native species, uh, this one, are the species that develops naturally in a certain area or the environment rather than being unintentionally or uh, consciously introduced by humans. While the introduced species, or yes, a species that originated in another areas and has spread to a new, uh, through the intentional and, uh, or even unintentional, uh, unintentional release by people. The demographers, this one, are the people who study the population age distribution growth rates in the known uh, demography. And the density is the quantity of people in a population per unit of space or uh, volume or a mass of a substance per unit of volume. Okay, class, so for our references and uh, recommended, uh, recommended readings for your additional uh, Okay, class, so that's the end of my lecture. So I hope you've gained something that uh, will help you understand why population growth is necessary for us to uh, understand and comprehend. And for our and for those who are studying real estate uh, PS real estate management, uh, this one is uh, somehow significant. So for us to to identify how the population growth would affect our industry in the real estate.
So thank you very much class for being part of this lecture and I hope to see you again on my next uh, lesson. Thank you and have a good day.